Hello, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this video is all about vlogging with the new Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III. Now, this camera is set to be very popular with the vlogging community because it built upon what was already a very popular camera with the Mark II. On top of that 24 to 100 millimeter f1.8 to 2.8 lens and one inch sensor and screen that flips up over the top to face you, which I'm using now to compose this shot. You're also getting 4K video and a microphone input. I'm gonna demonstrate both of those later on in the video, so stick around. But right now I'm gonna start off with a clip filmed in 1080 at 25p. And this is using the built-in microphones on the camera. I'm also using the most basic image stabilization mode. There's three of them, I'm gonna show you all three. And I'm also filming using the neutral profile so that the colors don't pop too much. Okay, so I think the first thing that I want to show you is what this camera is like when I switch to one of the improved stabilization modes. Okay, I switched from the image stabilization mode from low to standard, and this incurs a mild crop, which should also hopefully deliver a slightly better image stabilization. Oh, and just in case I didn't mention it earlier, I am filming with the lens at its widest 24mm and wide open at f1.8. I also have the neutral density filter set to on, and that's allowing me to film this at a nice motion friendly shutter speed. But now let's move on to the strongest image stabilization mode. Right now I've got image stabilization set to dynamic IS high. So this is Canon's most effective digital and optical stabilization working together. But that digital stabilization has incurred an additional crop beyond the standard one a minute ago. So that view is getting narrower and narrower. My face may be getting bigger and bigger. Let me move the camera as far away as I can. I'm now at arm's length. So that may be acceptable to you or not, depending on the compositions you want. Right, I'm going to switch back to the standard stabilization, which is optical only, and continue the video. Okay, now I'm back to the image stabilization set to low, so this does not incur a crop. I believe this is optical stabilization only. Now, just before I move on to 4K, a couple of extra notes about how I'm filming this in terms of autofocus. I have face detection enabled and also servo AF, so the camera should be autofocusing on me wherever I go on the frame. Now, as many of you already know, Canon has probably used the same sensor as the Sony RX100 Mark IV in this camera. They will never confirm that sort of detail to me, but that's what I suspect, because the camera does gain the 4K video and fast burst shooting of that model, but it misses out on phase detect autofocus. That was introduced on the RX100 Mark V. Now, Canon doesn't make these one-inch sensors. It has to buy them from Sony or another manufacturer, of course. So it's kind of limited in what they're willing to sell them. And of course, the price that it's willing to pay. Maybe the RX100 Mark V sensor was too expensive. Maybe Sony was saving it just for their cameras. We may never know. But basically, the bottom line is that the G7X Mark III relies on contrast-based autofocus. How good or bad is it? Well, let's find out. If I bring the camera closer towards me and further away, how well is it keeping me in focus? Is it hunting too much? When you're looking at these clips, also keep an eye on the background because one of the hallmark telltale signs of contrast-based autofocus is hunting back and forth very, very slightly. And you can often see that in slightly blurred lights in the background. So keep an eye on those to see what you think. But now let's move on to one of the headline features of the G7X Mark III, which is its ability to film in 4K video. So, so far, all the clips you've seen me present have been in 1080, 25p, but now starting with this clip, I'm filming 4K, still using the built-in microphone, still using the standard image stabilization mode, and still filming with the neutral profile. So, hopefully, you have seen a boost in resolution. Is it worth it? Do you really want to film in 4K? One of the other things that I should mention to you is that there is no additional crop when you're filming in 4K. It's the same as in 1080, so it's uncropped horizontally. And if you employ the stronger stabilization, then the slight field reduction that I showed you earlier, that also still applies. So if you choose the standard or high dynamic IS modes, it doesn't matter whether you're filming in 1080 or 4K, the crop remains the same on both of those. But now I'm gonna move on to probably the most exciting and highly anticipated features of the G7X Mark III, and that is its ability to connect an external microphone. So, goodbye built-in microphones. And it's hello to an external microphone. I'm using the Rode Wireless Go system, which is a wireless microphone system. You can see the transmitter here, 
which also features its own built-in uh, lav mic, which is really handy. And I've got the receiver unit uh, connected to the G7X Mark III. So this is pretty revolutionary stuff. I mean, until this point, no one had produced a one-inch class compact with a microphone input. Vloggers and reviewers had been asking the manufacturers for, for years. I mean, it's amazing to think that when the G7X Mark III came out, Sony was already comfortably onto its sixth generation RX100 and still without a microphone solution, which is incredibly frustrating and quite remarkable that Canon has beaten them to this feature, but you're witnessing it right now. Now, I've got a separate review about the Rode Wireless Go if you're interested in that system. It's really worth uh, checking out if you're interested in vlogging it uh, or recording any pieces to camera. It's really a very flexible system. The one thing you have to watch out for is that it is quite hot, it's quite loud on its output, so you will need to adjust your recording levels manually. That's just like adjusting your exposure. If the pitch is too bright, you need to darken it a bit. So what I've done here on the G7X Mark III is gone into the audio settings, chosen manual, and reduced those recording levels down to about 15%. So that's how low I've got it now, and hopefully I'm not clipping. Hopefully the sound isn't distorted. So what you're experiencing now, it is an experience, isn't it, is the full technological capabilities of the G7X Mark III. It's filming in 4K at 25p, that's its best quality. It's using the built-in stabilization. I'm using the microphone input with the Rode Wireless Go to record the audio. You may, however, be wondering how I've managed to connect the transmitter to the camera. I mean, obviously you can plug the cable into the side of the camera, that's no problem, but there's nowhere on the camera to actually mount an accessory. There's no hot shoe or bracket or anything else. So you're gonna to have to provide your own. Now, in the case of the Rode Wireless Go, it's quite easy. The transmitter is, uh, or rather the receiver box is pretty small. You could in fact just attach it with an elastic band if you want, but I'm using a kind of V clip type mount that is used to connect two accessories to one hot shoe. So I've got the camera connected to one of the hot shoes or cold shoes, and I have the road receiver connected to the other one. That would also allow me to use a mini shotgun microphone as well. You could also use one of those microphones that's designed to connect directly to the microphone input on a phone as well. And it's so small, the actual friction of the port itself will hold that microphone in place. So you could use that as quite a nice solution without having to use a bracket or anything else. Right, so I think I've covered pretty much everything in this video now. You've seen the quality modes, the stabilization, the image processing, do you like Canon's colors, the ability to connect an external microphone, to film in 4K now. Which features of these are you most excited about? And as importantly, how important is it for you to not have face detect autofocus on this camera? Were you satisfied with the autofocus performance on this? Because of course, if you do want a camera, a one inch camera with face detect autofocus, you're gonna have to go for something like Sony's RX100 Mark V or 5A. That does include PDAF, but it's a more expensive camera. It's gonna cost you probably a couple of hundred bucks or pounds more than the G7X Mark III, and you still don't get a microphone input. So I put it to you, dear viewer, which is more important to you, to the vlogging community? Do you want a microphone input? Or do you want face detect AF? Of course, I know the answer is that you want both, but you can't have both, not at least at the time that I made this video. So if you had to choose, what would you go for? And that wraps up this video for you. I hope you found it useful. Please check out my first looks review for an overview of the camera and also look out for my full final review along with sample images and movies, which as usual, you can download from cameralabs.com. Please do consider uh, supporting me with a like and a follow and maybe even a coffee if you're feeling extra generous. Right, that's it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for your comments. Bye-bye.